The other changes are in the Grass Valley browser. Now this was introduced in EDIUS 8. It's a nice little program basically for cataloging your footage and looking at your footage. I explained about it in the introduction to EDIUS 8 video that I did. Go and have a look at that for some more information. But basically you just point somewhere on the hard drive, you register some clips, you can make up catalogs, you can tag clips with different information, all sorts of stuff. Very useful for looking at footage and it deals with all kinds of footage. It didn't deal with red footage in version 8, in 8.1 it does. This is some red footage which is actually used for a Grass Valley demonstration you might have seen. Another little change is you can go to a particular clip. If you just press Control and T, it'll take a picture of wherever you are in the clip. Control T is the same shortcut that you'd use in EDIUS to take a still from the timeline. So you take a still. Where's it gone, you might say to yourself? Well, if you go up to Settings and then go to the third icon, this will tell you where the browser library is going to. You can see it's under Users, My Name, David, Videos, GV Library Browsery. So if I go and dig that up, Users, David, Videos, GV Browser, Library, Snapshot. Oh, here we are. There's my snapshot. You do have a couple of settings for it. So if I click on the first cog here, you can see you can choose the file format that you want. If it's something like a JPEG, you can choose the quality. If you're doing an interlaced clip, you can say whether it's upper field or lower field, and you can use the same kind of filtering options that you've got inside of EDIUS to try and get rid of that horrible comey pattern you get on interlaced clips. All that is exactly the same kind of thing that's inside of EDIUS. Other little changes they've got. Let me go to a clip like this. Press the play button. Here you can see this is a surround sound clip, happened to be filmed with six channels on it. I've now got this audio monitoring option down here. You can hear all the channels or just channel one or just channel two. There's also an option to bring up the zebra zones, just like you have in EDIUS. You can see there that I've got a little bit of zebraing going on, in which case they're a little bit too bright. Although if I choose a different shot like this one, you can see it's completely over the top. Needs a bit of tweaking. Again, nice little addition to it. One other nice option in the settings, which to be honest, I'm not entirely sure whether it was there in the old version or not, is this one, set poster frame. Obviously, as a default, the frame being shown here is the very first frame of my video. Sometimes that doesn't represent what the video is, but you can click on here and say, no, make a frame about five seconds in be the poster frame. And once you've done that, all these little poster frames will update. Now, my particular shots are just odd shots of buildings here, so it's not that noticeable. Of course, if you set the poster frame to be something like 5,000 seconds, you might have a problem because maybe your clips aren't that long. But you might just want to set it so that the poster frame isn't the very start. Probably the most useful thing they've added into it is the ability to deal with offline clips. Now, what's an offline clip? Well, imagine I've got some clips in here, I bought them all in, and then the folder that they're in gets moved or renamed or something. If I just drag up where that is on the hard drive, which is here, and I'm just going to change the name to Resolved, as it would be with any editing program, you go back into your editing program and the clips aren't there. You notice I've now got a little red dot. It means it's got some clips here that aren't actually on the hard drive anymore. Double click on it. Oh, can't play a thing because those clips have gone. So they were registered once, but they've actually disappeared. With the first version of the GV browser, you couldn't fix it. With this version, you can. The best thing to do is to go to the edit heading and choose search for offline clips. It then goes through the entire catalog and says, yep, these are the ones that are missing. There's 11 of them, which are obviously the ones that I just made offline. I'm gonna select the lot, right click and say, restore offline clip. Now I don't have to do all of them, I could have just chosen some of them, obviously I'm just going to do the lot. I need to tell the browser where the stuff is, so I'm going to click search folder, go and click on the folder that they're now in, and then I'm going to say start. So at the moment the search folder has just told it where they are, I've got to click start to actually get them to link up. And then close, job done. It still says 11 offline clips up here. Let's just go back to my search offline clips thingy. Yep, no offline clips. You're going to move clips all the time. That's the way of sorting them out. You could have just deleted that entire thing and then re-registered them. It's nice to be able to relink them. But that's probably the most useful addition inside the GV browser. Apart from, of course, the GV browser now working 100% properly under Windows 10.